So that's my personal TL922. I just had to change the meter lamp bulbs in it. This thing was a real basket case. I got it a long while back. Um, I'm just so lazy with my own stuff. I, I haven't been really on the air at all, so uh, I will be eventually. I want to go back down on 80 meters. So this thing was a basket case. It needed uh, a play tune air variable, needed a band switch, uh, needed a bunch of other stuff. So I had gone through it, and it's just been sitting upstairs in my uh, office area with all my other radio equipment that just sits idle. So I'm going to unbox the tubes, and I'll show you how I install them. This uh, 922's had all the mods done to it. I grounded the grids, which brings the gain up. Uh, it increases the stability. I did the bias, the self-bias mod, the you know the meter protection diode mod, the low inductance mods. It's had ten, I I added 10 meters to it, so that's installed. So, okay, so I'm going to get started here. And uh, I'm going to explain some other stuff after. So This is what they come in. They usually come in, well, they always come in a larger box. So these have a match pair here, and they're boxed within a, a larger box with peanuts. i go ahead and I'm using the mount. Oh, by the way, clean my workbench. So waiting on payment, waiting on payment, but they'll be off my bench and I'll have three or four uh, amplifiers unboxed mm -hmm. and being assessed on Monday. You get to see that. Okay, so, before you open it. Take my time. It's that kind of tape with the fiber in it. So. You get to see more than just my hands today, maybe. Maybe you'll see my body. <laughs> okay, so, comes with a test report. Let's see. Filament voltage, the amount of filament current, anode voltage, anode current. Okay. Control grid voltage. So, test it okay. And gives the name of the person who did the test and the date. And each tube has a serial number, so they can can be tracked for warranty purposes. Okay, so I'll take this tube out. Okay, so it's a white base tube. You can see everything it says on there. Okay, nice and clean. Um, some older tubes had a brown base, uh, some that were made in China, and then some have this fixed cap, and other ones have like a set screw to take the anode cap off. The, the you know, there's like a pin that comes through in some, and, and there's a like I said, an anode cap that's held on by a set screw. So I'll put this one right here carefully. Get the box out of the way. Actually, put this more over here. I usually use a razor blade, but screwdriver works fine. Okay, so go. Once again, test report that side. Tube here. Okay. So this part will get a little tricky. Let me see if I can move the tripod a little bit. Mm, it's a little tricky. Well, what I'm going to do is you have the parasitic suppressor assemblies here. Okay, so what I do is I loosen these screws. You never want to ship the amplifier with the anode caps installed. And always keep the stock ones. There's no need, like I said, for those other ones. Here are the stock ones. These are more than sufficient. 
Uh, the other ones bring the anodes closer to ground. Well, I won't get into that. I've explained that in other videos. Another, I've I've been told other people have been talking about it also. So there's plenty of content about why those aftermarket anode caps are not a good idea. Okay, so I'm going to loosen these screws on top of the plate choke. I'm not going to remove them because these screws are easy to drop. You have a, a screw, a split uh, washer, and a regular washer. So I'm going to swing this one all the way that way, and I'll hold see this tube in place. I look at the pins and get the orientation correct. And then I don't push it all the way in the socket at first. What I do is I'll take the anode cap, make sure the set screw on the side. Oops. That one right there is loose enough, you know, unscrewed enough so it doesn't hit, you know, inhibit the anode cap from sliding onto the top of the tube on the anode connection, the nipple on the top. Okay, so I'll drop it on. Okay, so now I will carefully swing that suppressor assembly back over. Okay, so now I know where that anode cap needs to land. I take the tube. And I hold that in place and then I tighten it up. Just snug it up. See, I'm holding it. See how I'm holding it? I'm going to snug it up here. And then I will take my screwdriver, like Phillips head, and remove the Phillips head metric screw, split washer, and washer. I'll show that in a second. As you can see in my hand here. So tiny, very tiny. You don't want to drop those in the amplifier. Okay, so now I will take the tube, now that it's oriented in the right position, and I will drop it in. Okay, so same goes for the other side. Well, I swing the, the parasitic suppressor assembly back over, and then I pretty much lines up. You can bend it just a little bit to get it to line up with the hole. You want to make sure the tube is fully seated and then you put the screw in. So I'm going to do it to the other side. I'm going to stop the video and I will put the covers back on and I'll be I'll tune it up real quick and I'll show you the output test. Okay, I'll be right back. See you soon. Okay, everybody. So I'm here with the amplifier. It's on. I'm going to show you how I go about tuning a customer's amp. I'm going to go to test it. It's on 80 meters. So I'll put a 5 watt carrier into the amp. Make sure you know I have a load attached. Uh, usually use a 1kW slug and you just bring it up to the point where it just goes beyond the 1kW then I know it's doing 1200 pp but for this video I'll, you know, I'll be using a 2500 watt slug. A genuine bird 2500H 2 to 30 megahertz slug. No doubler kits or any of that stuff that are engaged, and it has a genuine bird PEP meter. I mean, PEP kit. I'm sorry. I apologize. So, I'll put five watts in, tune it. I already did that to get it close. And then I'll switch the radio over to sideband, bring it up to about 30. You always want to tune it on the lower voltage setting. I'll explain why. Because if you have it on the higher voltage setting, and when you're tuning it, you're throwing the output network way out of whack. You're basically transforming the tube, uh, the anode impedance to the load impedance. So if it's way out of whack, the R voltage will be really high. You know, so if the play voltage is higher, then you, re you run a higher risk of flashing a component, like, you know, a plate tuner variable, band switch, something, you know. So if you start off on the lower voltage until you get it close, and then you can go to the higher voltage and do the fine tune. Okay, so I'm going to put the meter on PP. Go ahead and key the radio. Keying the amplifier with a foot pedal. I'll show the meters after so you'll see everything once it's all tuned. Hey, I'll bring it up some more. Bring it up to six. Uh, let's say uh, sixty. Shh. 
Oh, by the way, this is operating on 120. I'll show the. You'll see the voltmeter after. You'll see it's not dropping that much. Okay, so. It's right under the line between 10 and 15, so that's 1200. Okay. So, now let me zoom in on the meters for you. I'll show the radio after you get to see everything. Okay, so it's on the higher voltage, just over 3 kV. When you increase the voltage, you increase the total output. The gain goes up. Hello, one, two, one, two. Audio, hello. Let me bring the drive up. Just a hair more. Don't oh, turn it down. Okay. Audio hello. Audio hello. See the play voltage is, is dropping a couple needle widths. Great current. Audio hello. 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 Audio hello. Audio hello. 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 So, I'll show you the radio. Okay. So that's the power output, SWR, and it's set at 60. Audio hello, audio hello, 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 audio hello. I'll show you the meter over here. Audio, hello, 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 audio, hello, audio, one, two, one, two, hello, hello, hello. So, that's it. That's what this amplifier should do. That's what it's rated to do. The cooling cannot support more than that, nor can the other components. In order to gain half of one S unit, you would have to double your power. It's not worth it to push it. Problem is, you end up destroying a component or the tubes, or tube, tube or tubes. And when these tubes fail, 3 5 Zs, it's usually grid to filament short when they're being abused. Tubes aren't cheap, so strongly recommend not abusing it. So, uh, great tubes. I've been using them for I think almost two years now, well, a year and a half, over a year and a half, I think. And uh, just you know, great customer service over there. That's the truth. You know, uh, you know, it's really cool that I'm now a distributor. Someone called it a partnership, but I I call it a, you know being a distributor. Um, someone said that in a comment, one of my video comments, but. So I'm thinking I'm just going to pass the great, you know, the customers will get a great deal and just pass it right on to them, you know, so it'll just be an incentive for them. You know, they send their amp. If it needs tubes, they'll get a great deal. So I haven't used this amp in a while. This is my favorite amp, you know, the, uh, let me talk about it a little bit and why I like it so much. It has a thermal safety switch so if you get it too hot it shuts down it has a delay off timer for the fan you know just had these few little things that had to be rectified you know once I do that then it's just a very stout very reliable amplifier so great amps and it's not for sale so please don't ask I have I have a uh, I think I said before in the other video I have one or more upstairs. One of them might be in the box down here, but so you know, so if you go by the ratings, if you follow the manufacturer's specifications, you you run the proper filament voltage, you run you you just follow the specs for the tube and then you but 
the specs for the amplifier come first. You can't just run a tube at its full output thinking that the amplifier can support it. I know my customers, they, they pretty much know that. I'm just saying this for, for everyone that's watching, that amplifiers are designed to do a certain amount. I know I'm being repetitive, but if you stay within the specifications for the amp, you'll have less problems, if not any problems, with the amp. And you won't risk damaging the tubes, you know. So it's just um, number, you know, that aside. Big thing with these amplifiers, any tube type amp, solid state amp, is you want to keep it going into a good load. If you have an open on the output, that creates havoc. But you know the mods I do to the amplifiers help prevent you know hard failures from occurring if that were to happen. But so I hope this video. Help some people. It's uh, not something I normally do. I don't normally make videos of amplifiers um, in operation, but I wanted to do a quick review showing these working in this amplifier. So I pulled them right out of the box, as you saw. I didn't high pot them or anything. I just pull them right out, plug them in. That's how comfortable I am with their tubes. So thanks for watching. My website is amprepairguy.com. My phone number is 203-892-4119. If you have an amplifier you need repaired, feel free to give me a call. And I'll be back on Monday. 73s.